You too. Tom Sanger. Dave, how's it going? Yeah, no, I'm here now. Yeah, I know you think it's a bad idea, but it's just something I've got to do. Sorry, can you say that again? I'm afraid we have to let you go. You know how it's been. You, you got the memo, I take it. Let's face it, these are becoming a thing of the past, and all the lovely marketing and design that goes with them. They used to work in design, you know. Oversaw the third Gargantua album in 73. Mr. Phil... Kenneth. I've just spent a fortune doing up my flat. I'm in debt up to the eyeballs. What am I going to do now? Hey, Dave. Yep, I'm out of here. I'm... <sighs> no, I haven't spoken to her, but as I've just been made redundant, there's not much point, is there? Well, my notice period. Fuck that. I'm off now. Yeah. No, I never met this consultant, but she sounds like a right bitch. <laughs> Sneaks around thinks she knows it all in ten days. And the language she uses is like corporate speak run riot. Mm. Yeah. Too <laughs> right, but this is exactly what she needs, a decent thing too. <laughs> yeah, her life is empty, so she wrecks creative companies for kicks. Oh, uh, Eloise or something. Now that he's my fan. <laughs> Dave, not if your French woman looks like Audrey Tattoo. She's probably a wizened old trout. <laughs> Armpit hair and a tash and <laughs> a wart or mole of some sort she'd never think of removing. <laughs> Heavy duty containment underwear. <laughs> Dave, can I call you back? Hey? Louise Martin. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Tom. Jesus Christ. No, it's only me. We've got 87 minutes. My train leaves for Paris at 6.45. I need to be at the tube station by 6. Don't worry. Are you in France for New Year as well, or uh, just Christmas? I mean, we've only just got back in touch. Didn't you read my email? Yeah, you said you were going to be in France for Christmas. No, I said bye Christmas. I'm moving to France. So this is a goodbye type scenario. Drink? No, I don't feel like one. The reason I asked you. You go on. No, you go. It's not to try and win you back, okay, if that's what you're thinking. If it was, we'd been drinking alone by now. I guess I was just wondering why it Never was. Never 
ask why. Well, you're always this annoying. Oh, wait. You are too in love to notice. <laughs> Christ, you're full of it. <laughs> anyway, as I was saying, I was just... Tom, whatever it is, save it for your friends or your psychiatrist. Let's enjoy what's left of the evening and say our goodbyes. Fair enough. Back to your old self. I see defensive. Determined. Since I'm a bill, I've got back and cross. Well, this is Bill's doing, isn't it? OK, I don't want to talk about Bill and neither do you. Great bad. Rose for the pretty lady. Very good Christmas rose for the nice lady. Look so pretty. So tell me, what makes these Christmas roses exactly? Don't you dare. I paint them gold, especially. The fine things. But they go with her lips. It's fine for roses. One little red flower. We don't want any fucking roses. And this the season of goodwill. No romantics, this city. Did I see one of your groups on TV the other night? Groups? Bands, dear, bands. The Forgotten. Wear a lot of eyeliner and dress in black. First album comes with a free blindfold. Then earplugs. <laughs> no number one hit, then. The last single had 840,000 downloads. It's good. Well done. Yeah. Bill wants to get the vineyard going. Now Billy Boy gets to squeeze your grapes, eh? <laughs> you okay? Wrong passage. I gave up snorting wine. It's better just to drink it. <laughs> Thank you, God. It's stuck. Well observed. Why did the lights go out? Do I look like an electrician? Yes. be like there should be a phone to <sighs> office party <sighs> you won't get any reception on that in here none on mine told you Hello, can you hear us? Hello, anyone in there? Tag, it's Tom from marketing, we're stuck. Whoever's in there, engineer's coming. From where? Can you tell us how long it'll be? It's a speaker, not a phone. They can't hear us. Yeah, I knew that. That was Tarek from maintenance. He's been banging on about replacing these lifts for ages. This has happened before. At least once a month. And you still use them? We're on the 13th floor. But no one's done anything. I wrote an email. You wrote an email. It was more effective than your memo. We got one lift replaced. Just not this one. Well, you know, if I still worked here, maybe I'd do something about it. Someone got me fired, remember? Not fired. Redundant. And I didn't get you fired. I made recommendations. Right. Hey, we'll have you out as soon as engineers coming from Forum Wood. Oh. Yo, hang in there. Forum Wood is like 20 miles away. Hey, hang in there. Is that meant to be a joke? Tarek's sense of humor, you get used to it. You didn't make him redundant, did you? It's not helping, you know. You should rest. Use up all the bloody oxygen. Or it could be blocked. I don't know how long we're going to be here. Hey, you're using more oxygen talking. <sighs> Sit. What? Sit. I'm not a dog. Less words, more oxygen. Such an idiot. <sighs> Arthritis. Squash, if you want to know, against my ex-husband. 
That's how it gets revenge for the alimony. Nice. Wow, you just shared. Don't get used to it. What are you doing? Looking for structural weaknesses. Do you think you're Bruce Willis or something? I'm just making sure. Of what? That there's a plan B in case. In case what? In case we have to break out. Why would we have to do that? The engineer is on the way. Yeah, from Boreham Wood. We'll wait. They'll push a switch. We'll be out soon enough. Well, I hope so. What? Nothing. Will you please just tell me? There's not an air vent up there. It's a design feature. A fancy light. So I'm sure there's some air con of some kind. OK, you're an expert now. If I knew you had such skills, I might not have had you fired. Made redundant. <sighs> Hello, anyone out there? I'm supposed to be in the pub, celebrating my newfound freedom. The pub at 10 AM. Are you a complete alcoholic? Yeah, I guess you're a glass of rosé kind of girl. Probably tipsy after half a lager shandy. I'm French. I drink wine and I can handle it. So? What? Your morning drinking. Look, my brother works nights. Usually I meet him up on Sunday mornings with his colleagues. They work the printing presses at the Times. It's the only time we can meet up. Put into a cafe be more appropriate. Look, our pub is the only place where I can get a coffee and a fried breakfast and he can get a pint at the same time. Today I'm on the pints too, I reckon. Do you think your brother and his friends will miss you? <laughs> if I'm lucky, they'll notice. Some friends. Well, of course they'll miss me. I was exaggerating for comic effect. I'm not laughing. Just as well, your face might fall off. And anyway, what did I ever do to you? It's your kind. What? You're like my last boyfriend. What, witty, cultured and ruggedly handsome? He was interesting looking. The best. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't laugh for a moment. What? For a moment there, I thought you were flirting with me. Lord King Wenceslas looked out on the feast of Stephen. When, when the snow lay round about, deep and crisp and even, brightly shone the moon that night. Though the frost was cruel When a poor man came in sight Gathering winter fuel Hear the page and stand by me If thou knowest Let's go. I'm gonna miss my trap. God, yeah, before they attempt Silent Night. dwelling Side is a goodly hen underneath the mountain Fight across the forest fence by St. Agnes Bring me flesh and, and bring me wine. It's such a nice evening. We shouldn't have to rush. What should we do? Should have met earlier. In the pub for one of your breakfasts with David. You never came. <laughs> you never invited me. Anyway, be late. When am I ever late? You were late at your own brother's wedding. It's because someone was agonizing over lipstick. And someone's wonderful driving skills took us to the wrong church. All weddings look the same. <laughs> the guests were all from Armenia. And that did seem odd. <laughs> so, any women in your life right now? There was a singer-songwriter I was seeing, but, uh, but, but her lyrics sucked. <laughs> That's important. Now, it is when she insisted printing them on her website, what she thought profound, I thought profoundly banal. You're getting selective as you get old. Hey, I'm still the right side of 40. Yeah? Some grey at the temple. Distinguished. And in the ears. <gasps> oh. 
<laughs> flat it for you. <laughs> no, not for me, for your next singer-songwriter. No, no more singer-songwriters. Not unless they write like Joni, sing like Aretha, move like Beyonce and look like a young Kate Bush. You ask a lot. Compromise is the death of art. Your whole life has been a compromise. Nice. Go for the jugular. No, sorry, I didn't mean it that no, way. No, it's fine. Uh, we both some compromises. But someone's had a hand in your pants. I beg your pardon? No, I mean, uh, you, you have a stylist or something? You, you look good. You know, I have a personal shopper. Oh, come on. Hey, why am I letting you off so easily? Stand still for a minute. Huh? OK. <laughs> Well, not telling. Come on, it can't be that bad. I'd go to the gym three times a week. I better not say. You better say right now. Inadvisable given the circumstances. I was honest, you should be. I can't have changed that much in a year. You wouldn't like it. Uh, you wouldn't like my shoe up your ass. All right. When I first met you, I thought you were the most beautiful woman in town. OK, but now? Honestly? Yeah. Now I think you're the best looking girl I've ever seen. Told you you wouldn't like it. Why do you have to say that? You asked. Why such a compliment? Why now? Whenever you say something like that, I know you're looking for something. You want something from me. What could I possibly want from you, yeah? Because you're about to get on a train to another country in 51 minutes. That's right. have to do that. Do what? Whistle. Can't you sing like a normal person? I don't sing, ever. Thought you love music. I do. You won't sing. Do you like chocolate? Of course. Never tried to make it? Once. It was horrible. I rest my case. You can have the unmelted end. No, thanks. You sure? <laughs> you take nothing seriously. It's the only way to be. This is a record company, not an accountancy firm. It's still business. It certainly went for a different approach hiring you. What do you mean? You're a right bull buster. <laughs> OK, when a woman criticizes a colleague, she is a bull buster. And when a man does it, he's just the boss. That's because with a man, you know, it's just business, no sexual politics. There's always politics. You just resent how good women have become a power play. And if people dislike you? That's their problem. I wasn't here to be liked. Just as well. <clears throat> you weren't. What does this mean? A reminder of why I'm not pissed off to be leaving. Strategic development plan. Cost-benefit breakdown, SWOT analysis. I mean, what does this mean? Well, uh, strategic development plan no, is simple. What does it mean to talk like this in a company founded on the uh, emotional and passionate and instinctive power of music? I was employed to analyze the business. I know little about the groups and don't care. What was that? I don't know. I mean, maybe there's a power problem in the whole building. It's not going to happen again, is it? I doubt it. The emergency lights are most likely on some sort of a generator. It won't get used much. It's probably just rusty. Hey, hey, don't worry. Bournemouth's not that far, OK? We'll be fine. <laughs> What 
What was that crashing sound? Oh, no, vehicle. Maybe a gas explosion. What if it was a bomb? This is a record company, not an embassy, unless someone's taken offence to our cover of Rock the Casbah. You're not worried? I just don't believe in panicking until you get the facts. And if news came through the entire gum stuff that we were under attack? Yeah, then I'll start panicking, but I think it's highly unlikely. Then what was that noise? I don't know. Someone knocked over a filing cabinet, maybe. Or it could have been an explosion. You're not helping, you twat. Come on, get me out of here! Come on! I can't stand it! Put down there, go! <laughs> Fuck you, okay? Oh, now she shows her true colours. Spoken like a man, Miss Martin! Trapped in a shaft of air, hundreds of feet above the ground with a caveman. Yeah, well, at least I'm not freaking out. I mean, this caveman knows how the magical moving space box works and how it can get stuck sometimes. And then a clever man comes along. Oh, clever woman, you patronizing. Trust me, Jermaine Greer, it'll be a man and he'll fix it and you'll feel pretty dumb for freaking out. I didn't freak out. <laughs> I was just trying to hurry things on. That's all. Give me that. Why? Give it to me. Oh. Knew there was a reason why I was keeping this. Thanks. But don't think this let you off from being a jerk earlier. A pleasure, my lady. Oh, Whoa, my <laughs> Sorry. What was in that bloody wine? Bloody wine, mostly. Lightweight. <laughs> Ever try this? Oh, OK. Hello. Interest in a nibble? Ah, uh, two, please. Two. No problem. what you're doing, you know? Yeah, what am I doing? Inveigling. What? Word of the day in some magazine I picked up. I like it. Inveigling. I am? Expertly. You were always good at that. Always ready with just the right thing to say. Sometimes the right thing towards the most hurt. Come on, that's pretty harsh. I'm as much to blame. I'd fish for compliments, pretend to be insecure, looking for the boost you knew how to give me that little kick. You make me sound like an illicit drug. A person can get hooked on kindness, even if it's counterfeit. The way I felt by you was never faked. You were honest when you knew I'd like the answer. Because that's what people do, Ellie. No, Tom. That's what you do. Yeah? There are times I needed to hear the truth, too. Really? Even if it's brutal. Really? God, Eloise, you are a conundrum wrapped around a mystery in the middle of an enigma. Buried in a steaming pile of bullshit. something in a bit, all right? And I want you to answer me truthfully. No jokes. So... Of your bag. You were looking through my stuff. Don't look at my things. Your things? Why have you got 19 pairs of sunglasses in your bag with the price tag still attached? Are those from that stall on the corner by the newsstand? Don't be stupid. You've done this before. Are you a klepto? 
do you think I need to steal sunglasses? So you bought 36 pairs of sunglasses, what, for Christmas presents? Seven pairs. So what if I took them? Stole them. The shopkeeper was a bastard. I wanted to see some umbrellas, but he wouldn't let me open them. So... So you stole seven pairs of sunglasses instead? Yes. Yeah, well, just goes to show you people are surprising. Can I keep these? I mean, you got six more pairs. Don't care. Take them. Have you got a vast collection at home? No. Oh, I have quite a few staplers and adjustable spanners, though. I guess there are bastards in every trade. They certainly are. What? Ah, oh, take them. Nobody buys CDs anymore. Although I doubt Ebola Crash is your kind of music. I'm going to miss this walk. We must have done this a thousand times. Right, so here's the biggie. What I want to know is... What is that? Will you retired the Pentax I gave you? No, I, I still use it from time to time, but this is more convenient. Hey, I want to take your picture. You don't have time. Prepare for the world's quickest for the shoot. Well, underneath those city lights, you're gonna dream about you every night. But in between those city dreams, they're gonna find out just what lonely me. But I wasn't made to be holed up in the country. And I wasn't made for sitting still I never could and I never will Well, I never will mm, Close your eyes I get up well, Take notes Those city stars are gonna find out just what troubles are And underneath that city sun I'm gonna find my love on the run But I wasn't made to Hello, wait. Got a good voice. What? I said you've got a good voice. Thanks. I used to sing in restaurants and clubs. Really? What? Nothing. Just surprised. See, I'm not a musical Philistine. <laughs> Francoise Hardy. That's what you were singing, wasn't it? Yeah. That's one of my favorite songs of hers. Do you ever hear her cover of Leonard Cohen's Suzanne? No. I'll get you a copy. If you ever get out of it. <clears throat> What's that? I don't know. We're passing by, though. <sighs> Relax. No use being on edge all the time. Could be in there for hours. You'd like that? Some of us have jobs to go to. Sorry. I would have thought that's the one English word you wouldn't have bothered to learn. I take it back. I'm not sorry, you're a pig. my baby 
friends went gaga over her. Jaguar 3.4 Mark II. Might have to sell her. No, I'm out of work. Yo! You won't believe this, but the engine is gonna be a while. What? North Circular is fucked. Another couple of hours. Sorry, bruv. But listen, I, I might be able to get my uncle Faisal to come down. I hope he's a qualified engineer. Tarek has some dodgy relatives. Faisal's good with his hands. He fixes his washing machine. <gasps> oh no, putain, pas ça. I'll come and speak to you through the door, innit? Maybe do a bit of freestyling to keep you entertained. He's a rap wannabe. I'm always trying to get us to listen to one of his demos. Bet you haven't. Hello? Can you hear yeah, me? Yeah, loud and clear, mate. So look, this uncle. What? That you, bro? I knew it was you who removed... Right, yeah, I'm here with someone. She's... Uh, Tarek, I need to call someone urgently. We get no reception in here. Can you do that? No problem. Okay, I'll get the number. No signal on mine either. Forget it. No worries, back in a bit. They'll have hired someone else by now. Oh, you just lost a job? Good, then we're even. Just when I think you might not be a total asshole, you say something to remind me why I hate you. I'm just getting started. Wait another hour, then you'll really hate me. <laughs> I wanted to see how long you'd sit there. Yeah, yeah, nice one. Did you capture my soul? I'm taking it with me. <laughs> you pulled a cracker there, mate. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. It is the season to be. <laughs> Just for you. Yeah. Nice. Yeah? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. Now, uh, what do you call a three legged donkey? No idea. A wonky? I don't understand. Believe me, it's not worth it. What happened to you after I left? The usual. Drank a lot of beer. Experimented with a serious prawn cocktail crisps habit. Stopped shaving. Wanked mournfully whilst listening to Leonard Cohen. Hallelujah, not just police, obviously. Please, no jokes now. After you stopped all the calls, Dev turned up at my sister's place looking for you. Oh, you know, I don't think we should go into that. Yes, we should. You were almost stalking me. Then you vanished for a bit. Where were you? I was not stalking. Uh, Tom, you appeared in the supermarket, in, in the park, at my yoga class. I was thinking of joining. Look, there's no use just digging It's important. Tom, I was anxious. What happened? It's a long and dreary story. Can it be told in 30 minutes between here and the station? I guess. Just as long as you don't start singing Edith Bloody Piaf at an embarrassing volume. You always used to do that when I was trying to tell you something emotional. At least I can sing. So can I, technically. Sang in the shower this morning. But why not in public? I'll leave that to the professionals. Yeah, when you left, it was bad enough. I wanted to see if you were with anyone, so... Yeah, I followed you around for a bit. One day, when I was at work, you sneaked in and stripped the flat of all your possessions, like a swarm of locusts. Like... Everything was gone. I mean, everything, everything except an answering machine full of old messages. So you reminded me to pick up a pint of milk, send you book the plane tickets, me telling you that I'd be home after a pint of day. Never just a pint, though, was it? Yeah. I wanted to erase it. I wanted to sort of get rid of that reminder of everyday happiness along with all the photos, but... I couldn't. It's like the life I'd struggled to build up around me just collapsed. It was that fragile. Tom. You can't hold me responsible. 
You're going to let me tell it, seeing as though you insist it. OK, but just be warned, I may not be able to restrain the PF effect. <laughs> All right, I'll cut to the chase. That night, I got drunk. I mean, not tipsy, not pissed. Blind, obscene, falling over, puking on your shoes, drunk. Love me. <laughs> Woke up curled up under a bush in the park. Pulled myself to a crouching position by about two o'clock. When a tramp decided to piss on me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, that is the final straw. I've had enough of this. Lost the best piece of the jigsaw of my life and the will to put it back together again. And by 7.30, I'm looking for a chemist that's still open. So I want a headache cure. I want some paracetamol. A lot of paracetamol. You know, fast forward through an hour of chemist of it, because they only sell them in you know, small batches, and 28 is not going to be enough. I'm back in a park, drenched in tramp piss. A bottle of vodka in my hand. Go on, finish it. Don't worry. Has a happy ending. I'm singing in this bath really badly if you're wrong. I can't get the top of the paracetamol bottle. I never can with those things. Suddenly it pops open, scattering pills. As I'm gathering them up, this young bloke passing by comes over to investigate. I try to ignore him, but he picks up the paracetamol bottle. As soon as he clocks that and sees the vodka, he starts stamping on the pills. <laughs> he pulls me to my feet and he goes, how many are you taking? And I lie and I go, I don't know, four or five. He goes, well, that's the hangover cured anyway. <laughs> And then I find myself being shoved down the road by this Samaritan into a small club. And I notice he has a guitar. And I find out he's due to play an acoustic set as a warm up for a band called, wait for it, The Forgotten. That's how I met the band. The next day I got off my ass and started making plans for Eloise. For what? The name of our label. My mates tried to talk me out of it, but, um, you know. Don't ever do anything that stupid again, OK? Well, I'm not going to go around starting labels and naming them after exes. No, the what... overdose. Promise me or I'm leaving you here and now with no goodbyes. It's OK. It's OK. I promise, right? It was another life. What are you listening to? What? Sounds like that French Elvis guy. That old singer that was in that film. What was it called? Was that even older bloke in that house? Ah, oh, uh, no. Johnny Halliday, L'Homme du Train. You saw that? Yeah. I'm not a complete Philistine. I do watch foreign films. Emmanuel, part 13. Not at all. I saw Betty Blue. Half of that film is packing, anyway. The other half is froggy angst. Yeah, such a sad film. Yeah, great fucking scenes, though. Bro, have to revise that ETA. See you by two. What? I've got meetings. A uh, five-year-old kid had a fight at school. Uh, plus, there's nine high court judges stuck in a lift in Finchley. Engineers gone there first. Some of those boys are pushing oh, 80. Super. Another two hours of this with you. Want to call a truce? God, yes. You're still a tosser, though. Tosser? As in wanker or serial masturbator? <laughs> Close, I'm sure. You English have all the best insults. Well, I guess you're not the Antichrist. Shake. Just don't ask me to like you. <laughs> you're hard work, too, you know. Yeah, I know. Anna's always complaining. Anna? You might. You actually have a girlfriend? Fiance. She even gave me this ring. She said, why should only girls get one? Cute. Wait a minute. Someone's willing to share the rest of their life with you. That was a short truce. <laughs> Sorry. When's the wedding? Uh, we haven't really decided yet. A year, year and a half, probably. Why the long wait? We're both busy. You aren't. What's her job? She's studying. You're a student. 
How old is Anna? She's a bit younger. How much younger? She's very nearly 21. And you are? Not old enough to be a dad before you ask. Yeah, but nearing 40. 34, thanks. Yeah, 13 years older. Wedding's on at the moment, but she, uh, she changes her mind a lot. Children are like that. You're treading a fine line. That's my speciality. So, how did you meet the juvenile? We met at a gig. I know, predictable. I was dissing one of these faux glam bands fronted by a whiny voice email. You know the type. No, but go on. Well, I was laying into the singer to this cute girl, Anna. Turns out the singer was Anna's brother. You have a habit of saying the wrong thing. That's my speciality. But you recovered well. I mean, if you persuaded the infant to marry you. We kept bumping into each other at gigs. She was uh, working for a music website while studying, so I told her which bands to see, got her interviews. It all sounds a bit calculated to me. Yeah, it's called give and take. But the sex is frankly staggering. How romantic. Romance is for people with too much time on their hands. Anyway. What about you? Seeing anyone? Why are you asking? I know it's called conversation when people make friendly noises towards each other with their mouths. Not that much to tell. Come on, we could be in here for hours yet. Why not open up a little? Because it's just not that interesting. And anyway, why should I? We're strangers. It could have been anyone in this lift. Maybe it was fated that we were stuck together. Don't believe in fate, then? Obviously, karma. I'm being punished right now for what I did in a previous life. Or in this one. No, I'm a perfect angel. <laughs> All right, OK. Just so you know, I am an exceptionally good listener. No, OK, 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 <laughs> OK, OK. If you must know, there are some guys. Plural, they aren't you the femme fatale. No, I just don't have much time for a proper relationship. Do you realize how long it takes to set up your own business? How much work? Don't know, don't want to know, wouldn't let it rule my life. It's impossible not to. See, I'm not complaining. You don't get lonely sometimes. I do, okay. Well, you spare me the PF effect. Oh, you think so? No, Eloise, please. No! Making your way back home. To grab statues out of clay and bones. It's funny, I guess. An ironic call at once. From out of a mess comes someone else. So, tell me about this husband. Which husband? There's more than one. No, I don't remember mentioning my husband. He mentioned alimony, that tends to be a good boy. OK. Um, I was young and impressionable. He was an artist. I'm drawn to intense, poor, driven, creative types. Born from growing up in Montmartre, you know. Never been? You'd fit right in. <laughs> so, you and this penniless artist? Uh, he wasn't penniless for long. Ironically, our marriage fell apart when he got successful. 
newspaper articles, Satchi gallery shows, Turner Prize nomination. Would I have heard of him? Inflatable children, dogs, a blow-up houses of parliament. You could take your shoes off and bounce on it. Anthony Steinman, you were married to Tony Steinman. For nearly a year. And then? I came home early from a night class that was canceled. There he was in the bed being painted in chocolate spread by two teenage art groupies. <laughs> Do such people exist? Like you will not believe. I sense anger. I blew up his houses of parliament with a hat pin. The papers called me Girl Folks. <laughs> to give him his due, kept my name out of it. Said it was a politically motivated attack. And I got my alimony. I guess he was worried about the kids. Children. Blew up once. I'm Julie Ward. Oh. It's only going to get worse in here. They predicted 85 degrees outside. Secret Santa present. I didn't expect them to be aired in public. Ow! Oh, thanks! Okay in there? We've been in here for hours and no one's telling us what's happening. Mate, can you prize the doors open or something? Not with the power off. They won't budge. Someone's been jumping at the controls again. Can you open them just a little bit and get some water in here? I have a bash. Are you thirsty? Gasp in. See what you can do, eh? Do you want to hit me freestyle? Oh. Um, maybe later. We really do need a drink. That's going to be a mission. Leave it with me. This is not an invitation. So what should I do? Keep my eyes tightly screwed shut forever, or would you prefer to blindfold me? You wish. Not my fetish, dearest. Hey, don't call me that. OK, honey. Stop looking, you pervert. Nice bra. Roses, eh? Hey, wait a minute. Don't, don't. How much for the lot? Normally, it's 30 pounds. For you, nice man, is 50. <laughs> Special Christmas yeah, offer. Yeah, 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 OK, all right, 50 pounds. There you go. Merry Christmas. Do I want to be seen? Yeah. What am I supposed to do with this? I'm in mean, bill. Say when! OK, go. Oh, man. Uh. 
Okay. One any more? No, no, we're okay for now. Couldn't squeeze a pizza in through there, could you? <laughs> yeah, what would you like on it? Oh, uh, you know, peppers, beef, jalapenos, mushrooms. Anchovies on mine. No anchovies for the lady. Your wish is my command, but <sighs> I'll see what I can do, yeah? Oh, dear. I've really got to get down the gym again. Good idea. You really do know how to make a man feel good about himself. I'm sorry, but I save my compliments for when they count. So stop fishing. This is a truce, remember, not a courtship. Courtship? Where'd you learn your English? In the 18th century? Oh, you know what I mean, lâche-moi. We get out, we go our separate ways. Oh, agreed, agreed. Every man for himself. <laughs> That's exactly why I asked the CEO to fire you. Fire me. You spoke to Brubaker. No, not exactly. I made recommendations. A man hardly ever leaves Beverly Hills. Why him? I felt it was serious enough. What was serious enough? It was nothing about my efficiency, was it? Not really. But then what was it? Come on, spit it out. What was my great crime? OK, the Christmas party found. You stole from it. I uh, stole? That's absurd. I saw the emails to your bookkeeper. My what? You know, your horse-racing agent guy. Yeah, yeah, bookie, bookie, you mean bookie. What bookie? Big D. He took the money and gambled it away. Big D's not my bookie. Big D's my brother. Big D, Dave, Big D. The Christmas fund is like a, a giant petty cash tin, OK? Everyone in the office gets to dip into it throughout the year, as long as they make it up by the middle of December, before the Christmas party. You took £3,400. Not all at once. Of course not. It would have been stupid. In several installments. It's called embezzlement. You're lucky we didn't go to the police, and that's only because Mr. Brubaker insisted we make it a redundancy. Keep it quiet. It's probably because I know about the hookers he charges on his expenses as emergency plumbing. So you admit it? Yeah, I admit! Borrowing funds from my brother, yes! And what was he going to do with the money? Drink it or spend it on girls if it's anything like you? I think most of it went on the fees for the rehabilitation unit. My brother's a junkie, or, or was. I found this six-week program. He was in rehab, and he's been out, and he's been clean for a month. And I was going to raise a loan and pay it back. <laughs> Guess I don't need to now. Actually, they're going to take it back of your redundancy payment. Really? Yes. <laughs> Tarek, is that you? Uh, yeah, yeah. Half an hour, and Pfizer will be here. Swear down. How's it going? Oh, yeah, we're having a party in here. Hey. I want to see who I'm trapped in here with. Press play. <laughs> Funny boy, right? Eh? You remind me of my father. He filmed me having tantrums when I was a child. Said it would teach me a lesson if I saw how ridiculous I looked. I started stealing things around then. Sorry. Erase that now. Ah, excuse me. A rose. A Christmas rose. So tell me about you and Bill. How's that working out? Do you really want to know? I really want to know. I want to know how you are. I hope you're happy. Well, things have been better. Moving in with Bill was always going to be difficult. I think I'm not the most tolerant of people. <laughs> Your ever-growing niggle list. I suppose there are a few things that annoy me more than they should. A few? Wobbly tables, pictures in hotel rooms not hung straight. 
Yeah, horrible, greasy English breakfast. Unfunny political cartoons, Easter eggs, supermarkets, toilet attendants in bars, pavement cyclists. Plastic sauce bottles and puffs, you know, when they are crusted with old stuff. Sticky labels that tear off when you buy new CDs, or, or they come off but leave a sticky residue. Barcodes on pool jackets. Uh, the way it is photographic design. Fruit in mulled wine, badly varnished wood. You always had a thing about that. So the little things annoy you, big deal. Bill always found it symptomatic of a larger problem. He thought he could solve me like a puzzle. Thoughts? Thanks. You know my English slips when I'm stressed. So you're finding sharing a house tough again after months without me and your feet? <laughs> I got used to my freedom when I had my own place. The bathroom always being free when I wanted it. No wet socks drying over radiators except mine. No questions about your vast sunglasses collection. <laughs> I don't do that anymore. Anyway, Bill's an understanding man. So, that's not the issue. It's like the relationship's taken a shortcut from excitement to comfort. Missing out passion along the way. No, no, passion's overrated. You can't live with it that long. It's exhausting. Remember our first few months? <laughs> we were different people then. People don't change that much. I mean, we had passion, but we had something real underneath. Hormones. They relax after a few months. You're such a cynic. No, I'm a realist. So this thing with you and Bill, I mean, how is it an improvement between you and me? It's a proper adult relationship based on mutual trust and respect. <laughs> okay, I'm not selling him very well. Sounds about as much fun as his name. Good news rarely comes in windowed envelopes. What are you on about? Bills. Aren't you forgetting something? I don't know, has he got a very small penis? Oh, Tom, for God's sake. Do you want to know why I left you? You must have had plenty of time to figure it out. Yeah, I tried, I tried, but honestly, I just... I wanted to tell you myself. I knew I have to leave though there. Then it hit me the day after I moved out. Well, I do remember you kept stealing things and getting us into trouble. I got that under control, remember? That's not it. I wasn't very good at listening. You still aren't. You listen to the words, but you don't process them. You put them through some sort of Tom filter so they turn out the way you like. This just isn't fair. Maybe so, but that's not it either. Is it because I didn't paint the garden fence? I was going to do it on the day you walked out. I'll bring this. Tom can't talk right now. He's busy being beaten up. This was working all along. I didn't notice. And you didn't think to look when I was talking about my important meeting and how useful it would be to call and explain the delay? Yeah, well, you weren't exactly on my list of favourite people, then. It just cost me £3,000! Bastards! You asked Tarrant to call for you. Yeah! One, no more battery. Two, how would that have sounded? A random Indian man. Pakistani. Pakistani. A random Pakistani man who falls on my behalf with the excuse that I'm stuck in the left. Could happen to anyone. Not to me. You're a control freak. And you're a freak without control. Do not look. I had no intention of looking. Yo, Pete! I couldn't magic up a pizza, but... Coming through! I had to walk all the way up to floor 10 to get this jam. And they were proper miserable, man. Apart from that girl, Serena. You're welcome. Oh, she's a proper sweetie, isn't it? Do you fancy a cup of tea? You're kidding. Gotta have tea with toast. Uh, do you have some coffee out there? She is joking, right? Yeah, she's joking. Oh, it's tea or nothing, I'm afraid. Tea would be lovely, thanks, Tariq. You know my name, but I don't even know yours. Oh, uh, how rude of me. Um, Tariq, Eloise. Eloise, Tariq. Hey, Eloise. I'll get an ETA on Faisal in a minute. So, why don't you check out my demo? Yeah, I'm a little short of CD players at the moment, Tariq. I hope there's no sugar in this. What was my unforgivable sin? Give me a clue, at least. Do you remember the first trip we took together? Yeah, how can I forget Venice? Booking that palazzo was a bloody nightmare. Our first trip was Amsterdam. Was it? I'm confused. You bet, with all you smoked. 
That's what you do in Amsterdam. I had to practically carry you around the Van Gogh Museum. I was fine. You were being a bore and abstaining. You fell asleep in the cafe. I had to call you a taxi to get you home. I was furious. I made it up to you. How? The restaurant by the canal. We were the only two people in there. I bribed them to stay open. Why? You didn't tell me. I didn't tell you at the time because of the expense. You know, Tommy, it sounds strange, but part of being kind is letting the person know you've been kind. But back then, you tried. I stopped trying. Oh, now you got it. Not sure. Not sure. Not sure. Not sure I'll cope with this. Not sure. Not sure. Not sure. Do you want to know the worst thing you did to me, the worst week? Would it be easier if I just apologize in advance? My birthday, the last one. It was fun, I seem to remember. You took me to see some bands. I've been hinting about going away for the weekend. Yeah, well, you did a lot of hinting. You could try saying sometime, or perhaps start with mentioning and work up to the really explicit stuff. I took you to see the Foo Fighters, good seats too. Yeah. On my birthday, you did what you wanted to. And you had the nerve to make it this big special surprise. You did look surprised. Appalled. You ended me an envelope with some tickets. I've never heard of the food fighters. Two days later, we were having people around for dinner. I've been working. I asked you to daddy the house. So you and your Ricard company friends had a little party in there and trashed the place. You were asleep on the sofa. I packed a bag and left you there and then. God, you saw that. I didn't know. I had the right to be treated better. I'm sorry. I want to see your eyes. Say it again. Now he's being melodramatic. Say it. Eloise, I'm sorry I neglected you. I'm sorry I took you for granted. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Don't overdo it. God. Bill's the antidote to all this neglect, is he? Leave Bill out of this. He's different, that's all. Let's not get childish. Yes, Mother. Why am I defending him to you anyhow? How did this happen? You never wanted to know how happy I was with Bill. Hey, I only asked. You wanted to know how unhappy I was with him. Hey, Ellie, I... Hey, we're not unhappy. So you can take that smug smile you were preparing and shove it up your butt. <laughs> it's physiologically tricky. <laughs> Are you, are you, are you okay? Oh, I think so. I asked her most of the brunt. <sighs> Good. Might remind you what a pain in the ass you can be. You said I was a sweet and thoughtful guy on your goodbye night. I was experimenting with sarcasm. I never stopped thinking about you. After I left, I bet that faded fast enough. No, actually. Design came to me about nine months ago. Remember that photograph you liked? <laughs> You're not doing this to me, not now. Ellie. Eloise. Still got my jacket. Don't you reach for me. Tarek! Sorry, bro! What was that? I don't know. Maybe it doesn't like you. Who does it? Lift. It's alive. Maybe we're in one of those Japanese horror movies. The ones with the creepy, empty apartments, corridors, and lifts. Shut up. Hey. You all right? Be out of here soon, can you? Hey, you lost me a job. I got you fired. Where even now? Leave me alone. So never complete surprise today. Waves all strong. Now my knees again. Water's deep, dear. I'm too scared to move. Rather freeze here. Let's go on. 
Yeah, I'm on my way. No, it's not that late. I'm minutes away. I just have to say goodbye to my friend. No, she's no one you know. I'll be there as soon as I can. The train's not even quite a past. Okay? Okay, see you. No, I got two angry men to deal with. I'm not angry. <laughs> Where have you been? Recuperating from my violent assault. I've been learning self-defense. Really? I'm stronger now. Don't you want to know why I'm not angry? Because you realize you were wrong about almost everything and you want to thank me for showing you the way to the light. No, I'm not angry because I now know you're a hypocrite. We were doing so well. Don't ruin it. You told Bill you were seeing a friend, a female friend. How did you know that? You lied to your boyfriend about me. Why? It was just easier. Come on. I'm going to be late. So just don't get it. You're way too honest. The only reason you'd lie is that the truth would hurt someone. <laughs> I lie when it's important to lie. <laughs> what makes it so important now? Do we really need to spend our last few moments together in some sort of interrogation? Think of it as more of a Socratic dialogue. I'm leading you towards the truth. <laughs> oh, you're leading me towards the station. So if you have a point, I suggest Richard. I think the reason you lied to your boyfriend okay, is... Okay, poor Richard from my side. I think the reason you lied to Bill is... You're still a little bit in love with me. And if you told Bill you'd been seeing your ex and he asked you directly how you felt about me, you wouldn't be able to lie about it and he'd be hurt badly. You do have such an imagination. You're wrong. Yeah, of course, what was I thinking? I mean, I haven't even seen you for a year. Did I really think you'd keep the candle burning? Oh, shut up, OK? I'm sorry. I'm a wreck. No, no worries, OK? <laughs> Look, OK? I texted him hours ago, not after you saw. And you said you erased it. <sighs> oh. Gee, I'm sorry. You just wanted your friend to laugh at me? Peter, you divorced it. I still have six more pairs. <laughs> 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 Skanky is not the word. When I said you were wrong, what I meant was I don't still love you a little bit. This is just pissing me off now. I love you a lot. Way too much. God knows I'd have an easy life if I didn't, but I do. And there we are, and we just both have to deal with it. You make it sound like a disability. Uh, you were wrong about why I didn't tell Bill about meeting you. I didn't tell him because I wanted this bit of my day to be just for me. I didn't want to share you. Ironically, I seem to be sharing you.
why are you whistling? This is the whistle of regret. I'm sorry, Tom. I shouldn't have kissed you. Perhaps. But if you hadn't, I might have lunged anyway. It was such a torment for me not to be able to touch you. Poor we, Tom. Hey, hey, hey. Less of the we. In fact, I'm a bit bigger than I was a moment ago. <laughs> Put that away. I'm trying. I'm trying. Tell me something deeply unsexy. Quickly, quickly. Mm, they'll ask me to marry him. Must have built up the question. What, down on one knee, fancy restaurant, big rock. Both knees. The ivy. Sapphire as big as a blueberry. Such a tosser. <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry, it just came out. I didn't want to tell you. I knew you'd take it like that. What did you expect? I told you I'd have a huge Eloise-shaped hole in me when you left. How am I going to fill it now? I'm quite a regular shape. I'm sure you'll find someone. <sighs> Ellie. I haven't said yes yet. You're going to France with him to renovate a vineyard. It's quite some commitment for a risk-averse person. I know. Bail friends, the hotel vineyard, it's a lot to take home, but you were always saying I need to take more risks. Well, you leave everything behind. Is there nothing you'd miss? You know the answer to that. Give us another ten minutes. Just got your food on. That won't happen again. Won't happen again to me. It's my last day. What? You never said anything. Yeah, well, don't do leaving parties, bruv. Still, I'll pop by when I'm in the neighbourhood, yeah? You better. Uh, and is this the famous Miss Eloise? Yeah, thanks for feeding and watering us. Make us sound like animals. No worries, bruv. Um, Tom? Uh -huh. I better go. I'm late for everything. Hey. Haven't you forgotten something? Come oh, on, man, you're going to freestyle for us. Oh, man, I'd love to, but I don't have any of my backing tracks. No shame. I'd like to hear it. Oh, OK, um... Tom and Louise stuck in the elevator. She's a hottie. He's a player, hanging in the dark, no spark of light. Would I be there all day, all night? No, it's all right, cos Tarek's in the room, making toast for the folks that roast in the gloom. At the point of collapse, in the metal box, you pins out to their panties and socks. <laughs> Help is at hand, engineers here. Owls have passed and at last it's clear. Faisal's the man with the plan, not Stan. Guy with the crowbar as far as... <laughs> <laughs> ah, mate, it was great, man. I thought you were going to suck as well. I knew you'd be good. <laughs> really? You, you liked it? I'll put my demos online next week. Send me a link. So you'll come and see us sometime? Yeah, I'll pop by, I promise, yeah? OK, send me that link. I will. Nice to meet you, Miss Eloise. Yeah. Later. Safe, man. Well, um, uh, where are you going now? Uh, well, I'll see if Dave and the boys are in the pub. Could do with the drink. Probably Blotto by now. Blotto? Blotto. Shit face, the plastered. Dark as a skunk. Oh. <laughs> I mean, we have lots of words for our favourite pastime. Okay. Um, I'd better go. <laughs> okay, Miss Martin, I think that concludes our business. <laughs> Hi, Anna. What? Uh, no, I was stuck on the lift. For hours. Okay. No, seriously. Huh? Don't be daft. What? No, no I haven't uh, checked the messages yet, no. Look, Anna, I don't have time for this now. I really don't. Look, I'll call you back, okay? Uh, Anna, please. Uh, huh? Yeah, I'm losing you. I'm losing you. Fuck it. Before you get on that train, I need to give you something and I need to tell you something. Always drama, Tom, give. 
Oh, thank you. But it's not Christmas yet. Is it going to get me in trouble? Not well, if you destroy the note that comes with it. <laughs> Thanks. I didn't give you anything. You gave me plenty. I want to tell you why she dumped Mr. Super Success Story Bill and take over the reprobate like me again. I knew it. I knew you'd try something like this. Purely improv, believe me. Okay, you have 30 seconds to tell me why I should give her the chance of a lifetime to shack up with a man who wants to call me at the masculating Emasculating bitch. It's to tell them, Demon, you weren't supposed to remember. Yeah. From here to the end of the tunnel, go. You've got to come back with me because I can't sleep without you there. Drink chamomile tea. I brought an innocent man the week after we first met because he was your favourite. I've gone off with it all, more into Phil Collins now. God, no one's as much fun to be silent with as you. I'll send you a cardboard cut out. Because you made the greatest desserts I've I'll ever tasted. I'll send you the recipes. Because all my friends adore you. Your friends were just relieved you're spending time with a girl who doesn't have a webcam. Because I love you. I can't believe you're doing this to me again. You turned my life upside down. Hey, that's another reason why I'm living. Aren't you gonna give me your phone number? Um, well, have you got a good memory? Nah, no, not particularly. <laughs> you better remember this. 077 Wait a minute. Mike had got another pen. Oh, maybe. Oh, seven seven double zero. Are you on Facebook? What's Facebook? Sorry, nine Mike. zero zero four. Shit. Oh double seven double zero nine double zero. Four six two. Four six two. Got it. I hope so. I just realised you do know the Eurostar doesn't go from here, hasn't VS? Yeah, I know. Right. Of course, you would have been quicker going from London Bridge. Uh, I really do have to go. Turn around. Just turn around once. I'm so sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Pierre, and I would like to welcome you all to your service to Paris. You will be pleased to hear about the system of the RPC which is 6 and 13, where you will find a range of hot and cold food and drinks. You will also find information about a bistro menu in our Eurostar magazine.
around eight. I'm just meeting Dave for one. Hi, love. It's me. Can you pick up a pint of milk and some bread? And not the white stuff like chalk. In baguette, s'il te plaît. Bye, sweetie. Tom? Better be out of bed. Jim and Sarah are coming round. I iron your shirt. See you in a while. Hey, Louise, why aren't you here? Oh, I'm having a blast, but I wish you were with me. Anyhow, I'm leaving. I'm leaving soon. I, I love you. I can't believe I'm going to do this. No, I told you I don't sing. So don't say you weren't warned. Told you I couldn't sing. Ha, ha, ha. 
Ah. 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 Ah.